as the spiritual leaders because God has already spoken. What we have experienced and encountered in this service today is the presence of God. Yes, we can remind ourselves that God is able to do that which seems impossible to man. And it doesn't matter how long, but when God says yes, it is a yes. Hallelujah. Surely God is gracious. He has done. We've been in prayers, but he has done it. Allow me to take you to the book of Exodus chapter 17, reading from verse 8. Please, the technical team, Exodus chapter 17, reading from verse 8. This was a time, the time of Moses. The time of Moses and the children of Israel. When they were in the wilderness already, crossed the Red Sea, they had come into the wilderness, they had passed the wilderness of sin, and all through, they came to a place called Rephidim, where they camped. But after that, they were attacked by their enemies called the Amalekites. The Bible records the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses and Aaron and Har went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Har held his hand up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with a sword. Mighty and everlasting Father, use me as a vessel. Thy share of your word, dear Lord, may you come through for us, dear Redeemer. Show us with your blessings, we pray. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. Amen. Today, I want to share briefly on this topic, borrowed from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, a time when Moses was up the mountain and Joshua was fighting the Amalekite army down the hill. Today, my message is titled, Power of Lifted Hands. Power of lifted hands. Hallelujah. There is power when hands are lifted, either in worship or otherwise. There is the power that we gain when we lift our hands unto the Lord. When we worship our God, there is power in those hands and there is power when we call unto the Lord. Today, allow me to speak and digress a little bit from lifting our hands to worship, but when we lift the hand of each other, that there will be power and there will be victory. Joshua was chosen by Moses. This is a time, let me take you a little bit back, a time when Israel had gone through so many challenges. They had gone through the Red Sea. The Lord fought for them. And they did nothing. They did not wage war. They went through periods when there was no water and God provided. God took them through a journey. But when they came at Rephidim, this was their first attack, their first physical attack by their enemies. They had not waged any other war. This was the first war that Moses fought at Rephidim. And it was not an easy war because they were not prepared. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Moses. And Moses was told, just tell Joshua to pick some men to go into the battlefield that they may fight. And for you, Aaron and her, go to the top hill and then raise up your staff and your hands and I will give you victory. And when they went up, the battle began downhill. It was not easy. If you read well the account, the Bible records that the period of fighting was from daybreak till sunset. And it was a period. 
And it was not just an encounter coup wapote. Uh -uh. And it was a period. And this is what I want us to share about. The encounter that happens, that happened downhill, which was won by the man who was lifting up his hands. There was an, there was an attack in the Israelite army. In the Israelite camp, there was an attack. An unusual Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we encounter attacks which are unusual, which are not normal. Yes, you have gone through so much in life, but it happens at one time that you get an attack out of nowhere, which is not usual, which is not common. And this is what the children of Israel encountered. They were used to the wilderness and they were telling each other, It is only that we do not have water, but God is with us. It is only that it is dry. But a time came when they encountered physical challenge. And this physical challenge, they could not overcome the way they used to. They had to have someone lift up hands, and that was Moses. And God told Moses, go up and lift up your hands. But I'm telling you, it was not easy. Though through the hand of Moses, the children of Israel had seen victory. But a time came when they went up, he grew tired. Even though he was mighty, even though he was led of the Spirit of God, he grew tired and he has, his hands would come down. And the Bible records when the hands came down, they were losing the battle. But I thank God that Moses took with him Aaron and her. These two men were there to support Moses. These two men were there to lift up his hands and they provided a stone where Moses would sit. I want you to see the scenario up there. And it was not cause it was not easy. It was not usual. But they provided a stone and Moses did not argue. He sat on this stone and they lift up his they lifted his hands. And I'm telling you, they did this till sunset. The power of lifted hands. When the hands were up, there was victory downhill. Hallelujah. I want to turn that to us today that we need to invite people in our lives who can lift our hands that we can experience victory. Hallelujah. That we have people who can walk with us. I'm thanking God. I didn't know what Anne would say. That you have lifted. And I did not have any idea because when God gave me this word, it was a while. But God is gracious that he has brought it at a time when we can see the practicality of it. That when we lift up our hands together, there is victory. And it doesn't matter the battle downhill. What matters is the lifted hands. When we lift someone, there is victory. Hallelujah. When we lift the hand of someone, there is victory. And it doesn't matter because the attack in the enemy's in the camp of Israel, it was unusual. Today you might be in an unusual attack. You do not need to trust your yester victory. You need to call unto the Lord. Tell God, I need your victory. I need you to lift my hands that I will not despair. You can imagine it was from daybreak to sunset. Lifted hands. Hallelujah. Do you want us to do it practically here? To lead the one grade your emo cogina de rekia. Mone cana de comagoidia. We can tell him to lift up his hands and see if we will not get tired. It is not easy. But I'm telling you because there was Aaron and there was her, they lifted up the hands of Moses. Today, brothers and sisters, we are called to exercise two or three things. Allow me to mention them quickly by passing that when we are exercising the power of lifted hands we have to exercise patience with each other moses and it was not easy because he was growing tired 
But Aaron and her were there to tell him, you know what, Moses? These hands need to go up. And it doesn't matter if you are tired, you're not giving up, and we are not giving up on you. Do not give up on anyone that God has assigned to you that you may lift them up. And it doesn't matter how long the battle will stay, and it doesn't matter how long it will take, but lift up their hands, hallelujah, because there will be victory. Imagine from morning till evening, struggling with someone. Lakini these guys were there. Sometimes you feel like you want to lose it. But we are there to tell you it is possible. Hallelujah. We are there to tell you, yes, you are going to make it. There is power in lifted hands. Yes, yes you can encourage someone. You might not lift them physically, but you can call, you can encourage, you can share with someone. You can send your love to them that are discouraged. Yes, you can tell them it is possible. Lift them up. There is power in lifted hands. Because when the hands were up, there was victory down the hill. Hallelujah. There is someone today fighting some battles downhill. We might not realize, but we are called to stand in the gap as prayer warriors. That we call unto the Lord. And many at times we think about ourselves, but we do not know there are people fighting battles downhill. They need you, they need me. Hallelujah. Sometimes we even come to church. And when the pastor doesn't do it your way, you start quarreling. It is not about your way. It is about remembering others who are in the battlefield. Hallelujah. We have to forget about ourselves and remember about others who need their hands to be lifted. Hallelujah. Be patient. Be patient with others. Lift their hands. Encourage someone. Walk with someone. Their attack to you might seem just like nothing, but to them it is everything. Hallelujah. We can use our sister Anne today. Maybe some people back home saw her and they thought she was not going through any challenge. But it was only her who knew the depth and the pain. It is only you who knows the battle that you are going through. It is only when people encourage and hold you as a church, we need to walk together and lift each other up. Hallelujah. There are times... When people live together and only what they do is tear each other down. But it is a time to lift one another. It is a time to walk together. It is a time to tell God, may you give me people who can lift me up. God, give me people who will be patient with me when I'm in the battlefield. Hallelujah. People who are faithful. People who are patient with you. It is not easy. Hallelujah. You can imagine. Joshua overcame. Not because he knew how to fight. Because he had another support system. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor. Do you have a support system? A trustworthy support system. Mm. Do you have a trustworthy support system? A people who will lift you up. A people who will encourage you. Even when others are saying, forget about this one, and even they will call you names, when you are written off, there are people who will stand with you. There is power in lifted hands. Hallelujah. When somebody tells you, you can make it, it feels so good. But many a times, we are pushing each other down, telling each other, we knew you could not make it. We saw it in you, failure. But I'm telling you, when God says it is a yes, nobody can say no. Hallelujah. Just lift someone. Have that love. Have that patience. The patience that I see with Aaron and her up there. You can imagine, it is only Moses. Read very carefully. It is only Moses who is sitting. Did we find anywhere that they say they also took stones? Uh -uh. It is only Moses who is sitting. But these guys are standing, not giving up, and they are lifting the hand of... Oh my goodness. What happens when you lift somebody's hand? Where will you be your hand? 
and they will also be up. So will you also be tired? But they did not give up. But you are giving up on someone because you are just praying one week, oh, pray with me, and then you are giving up. You are just saying this one, and the prayer issues, I'm done with them. We need people who will stand with us from morning to sunset. Hallelujah. Do not give up on your brother. Do not give up on your sister. There needs to be patience. People who can be trusted. Hallelujah. Just have a self-evaluation. Can somebody trust you to hold their hand and not give up? Can somebody, oh my goodness, I can see somebody looking at their spouse and like, <laughs> uh, okay, it is, it is not easy. But we need the grace of God that we can lift each other. Because there is victory. Hallelujah. The cry of our sister is because there is victory. She had an attack. An unusual attack. The village did not understand that. People might not understand your attack. But when people lift you up, there is victory. May you experience victory in the battlefield. May you have people who will lift you up. May you have people who will encourage you in your journey. Hallelujah. Because God is gracious. The duration of the attack. The duration of the attack. Imagine. Do not despair. Do not give up. It doesn't matter how long it will take. Because God has designed victory. And when you are in that duration, when you are in that battlefield, always remember and focus upon the victory of God. Hallelujah. Focus upon the victory of God. People might break you. You need people who can walk with you. Remember in the gospel of Luke, there was this man who had palsy. His body was not functioning. And uh, his friends came and took him. They wanted to take him to Jesus. They could not find a mean. They could not find a way. But you know what? How did they manage? They went to the rooftop. They did not count the cost. They did not count the pain. They did not mind about the damage to the roof. They did not mind about the ridicule of the people, calling them crazy, calling, saying you don't even know what you're doing. But they took this man, went to the rooftop, and brought him down. We need this kind of people who will risk and who will stand with us. People who will not count the cost. People who will withstand pain. People who can withstand ridicule. Praise the Lord. Mtu ambaya naweza simama na wewe. Ata kama ata onekana mpumbavu. Ata simama na wewe. Wakati wengine wame kuondokea. Ata sema kweli ni najua ndani ya huyu kuna dhahabu ndani ya huyu kuna ushindi haleluya wakati wengine wanaona wewe umeicha tunataka watu ambao watafanya mambo ya kiajabu haleluya and this is what you can imagine these people they did not care what the owner would think about after that they said fast things fast what was fast in their mind the healing of their friend are you there that you can go to that length. That you can go to such an extreme. Because you wish somebody well. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The anointing of David in 1 Samuel chapter 16, 10 and following, following. We, we, know, we know about this story. Samuel goes to the house of Jesse. And he was sent that he may go anoint someone he was not told who. But a time came when Jesus brought all his sons, Eliab, the Shammah, and others. But a time came when the horn would not release the oil. And then comes here and Samuel is asking this father, is there anyone else in your family left? And you can imagine the answer. I want you to 
Go and read this account, 1 Samuel 16, reading from verse 10. And then Jesse said, uh, there is only one boy who is tending the sheep. And Samuel said, can you send for him? The father saw a shepherd boy, a boy who was beaten. But when Samuel went there, I want us to read this verse, verse 11c. Yes, verse 11c. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the ship. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. Hallelujah. This boy was in the grazing field. He, he was kind of forgotten. He was not included in their thinking. He was not among those to be anointed. Even the father did not see it. The father did not see such a boy, uh, just a shepherd boy. You can imagine how he was in the grazing field. But when Samuel came and he said, send for him, I want you to see 11c says, we will not sit down until he arrives. There was someone who was patient enough for David to come from the grazing field to the anointing ground. Someone was patient enough. And this is Samuel, a prophet. But he said, we will not sit down until... So you can imagine, from the grazing field, Samuel and his army and his people were just standing in the homestead of Jesse, waiting for a shepherd boy. And the father was like, what is this man doing? Who you are doing? Who you are doing? Huyu kijana anajua mpengine amerarukiwa. Huyu kijana anajua. Lakini Samuel said, I will sit not. We are going to wait until he comes. Can we go to the next verse? And the version, and, and whatever was in the mind of the father, is not what appeared. Hallelujah. Somebody has to have patience and wait upon. So he sent for him and had him brought in. How did he come in? What does the Bible record? He was glowing with health and a fine appearance and handsome features. Hallelujah. The boy, the impression that was created in Samuel came out otherwise. Because Samuel was told this is only a shepherd boy. But who appears a man who is glowing in appearance, a man who is healthy, a man who is handsome. Oh my. You can imagine. Some people have, might have heard about you. Yes, they might have heard like you are nothing, like you are just a shepherd boy. There is nothing that can come out of you. But I thank God there was Samuel who was patient enough to wait for the shepherd boy. And when this boy came, he was glowing. And it was not what he had had. Today, I'm tendering to you that you need to be patient with someone. It is not what you have had. It is what the Lord is doing. Because there was change from the grazing field to the anointing ground. This boy came glowing. Some people might have heard about you. And might have written you off. But I want to tell you, when you are patient with someone, there will be change. Parents, when you are patient with your children, it is not what people are saying today. It is what the Lord is doing. From their grazing field to their anointing ground, there will be change. They need someone to say, I am not going to sit till they come. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes we are very quick to dismiss. Imagine somewhere if he had dismissed David, if he had said, oh, jamaa wa kuchunga wachana nae. I know bontau hawawezi kujua kuchunga ni namna gani. Bontau hawawezi kujua. But those people and our fathers here, they can know. The man aleithia, narema talema aleithia, nano geo uwa, nidhiyo toaliyo kuwa. 
you, you can imagine writing off someone, writing off your children because you are not patient enough. How I pray that we may have the spirit of Samuel and wait upon our children. Wait upon your husband. Wait upon your wife. Be patient enough. Hallelujah. And there is change from the grazing field to the anointing ground. Imagine. Even the father was like, who is this coming? We thought he was only a just a shepherd boy. But now he is changed. We see a boy who is glowing. People might have heard about you. People hear about you. But when you appear, it is not what they have seen. Hallelujah. Because he knew there is greatness. He knew there is power. He knew there is more than you can imagine. Do not be worried by what people have heard. Wait until they see what the Lord has done in you. Hallelujah. Wait until they see what the Lord has done. Wait upon someone. Wait. Be patient. There is power in lifted hand. Samuel lifted David. Yes, he waited. Lift someone. Hallelujah. Wait on someone. Please whisper your neighbor. Tell neighbor, lift someone. Neighbor, lift someone. We need to lift each other. Hallelujah. There is power in lifted hands. Hallelujah. Do I have someone who would be there to lift the hand of someone? Do we have someone who would want to lift somebody? Do I have someone who will be patient with somebody? Someone who will not just listen and give in to what they have heard, but wait upon God. Hallelujah. How I choose today to wait upon God. It doesn't matter what they will say about you, but I pray to God that I may be patient, that I may lift somebody, that I may encourage someone, that I may tell someone it is well. You are going to make it. You are a winner. Just speak positivity in the lives of someone. Hallelujah. Speak positivity. Hallelujah. Just tell someone, yes, the Lord says, we are more than conquerors. It doesn't matter the duration of the battle. You can imagine Samuel. And, and let me tell you something. When the Lord lifts you up, when you are lifted, if you really understand what it means to be lifted, when you are lifted, then you humble. Lifting calls for humility. The prophet of God, Samuel, you know he is the one who had anointed who? Saul. And now he is being told to go anoint somebody else. And when he went there, he said, we are not going to sit. We are going to wait upon David. But what happens when God lifts us up? He say, oh, kama hamweki masa, mimi na nyinyi, uh-uh, it is X. Tunainuka, tunainuka, tunaanza madharau. But this man was humble. He said, hatuwezi ataka, tutasimama mpaka huyu jamaa fike. Hallelujah. A level of humility. He was lifted up. He was elevated. Yes, he was a mighty prophet. But he humbled. Can we humble ourselves before God? It doesn't matter your level. It is not being called reverend. Uh -uh. If that is nothing. We are all sojourners. We are all called to humble and walk with each other. It is not about titles. It is not about your family. Maybe you have come from a very large family, but you need to humble yourself. Humble yourself before God that you may be lifted and great things will happen. Wait upon someone. See them being beautified. Hallelujah. I liked it when the Lord revealed this, that Samuel waited and when David was coming, he was beautified. May you wait and see your children be beautified. May you wait upon the Lord and see your family being beautified. And it doesn't matter where you have been thrown by the enemy. But the Lord is moving you to a new ground. The Lord is bringing you to a new level. A new dispensation. A new beginning that you will be purified. Hallelujah. Do I have someone 
who was waiting upon the Lord. You have been in that battlefield, but you are telling God, God, fight this battle for me. It is over. It is done. Church, our battles, our wars can be over when we choose to lift each other. When we engage in prayer, let us give ourselves in prayer. Let us give ourselves to God that we may be blessed. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord God keep you. May he walk with you. May he beautify your time. Praise and worship team, please join me. May the Lord beautify your time. May the Lord God give you a new beginning. When you are almost giving up because of that sunset, do not worry about the sunset because victory is coming your way. There is a new beginning. The Lord is going to beautify your times. Hallelujah. Do not give up. Do not worry about the duration. Just focus upon God. Church, let us be upstanding that we may thank God. As we join together with this team, as they give us a worship chorus, tell God to remember you in that battlefield. Tell God to give you people who can lift up your hand. Tell God to give you people who can just to walk with you, who can encourage you.